started climbing when I was five years old with my family. My dad tried like a portable wall at a mall and just <laughs> loved it. And he found a gym near our house and we just started going all together. And so my whole immediate family climbs and it was just like family hobby. Welcome to the other three years, a show for anyone who has an Olympic sized dream they want to turn into a reality. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of The Other Three Years podcast. This week is a really fun episode. I have guest Emma Hunt, and Emma is a professional climber, and she specializes in speed climbing and actually qualified for the upcoming Paris Olympics by placing second at the 2023 World Championships earlier this year. She also just came in second at the Pan Am Games. She's just crushing it left and right. And it was super fun to connect with Emma and learn all about climbing and specifically what she does, sprint climbing, which she will tell you all about in the episode, but is really interestingly always raced on the exact same wall. So she can practice it like every day, which she does or not every day, but you'll hear about it in the episode. Emma and I compared and contrasted our sports and she just shared a lot about her own journey and her own other three years. It was a super fun conversation and she's a rock star, just still pretty young and new in her in her journey, but still already so accomplished. And yeah, it was really awesome to have her on. Before we get into that though, I wanted to share an update on what's currently going on in my training. I am in Sarasota, Florida still for this week. It is the week before Christmas and the holiday week. So it was windy all of last week, but we did get out for some good rows. And sometimes it's good to row in the wind. And I think just trying to use everything to your advantage as much as possible. Obviously, it would be great if the water was dead flat all the time, but that's just not really any reality. And I think... I'm just trying to use like, okay, the windy days are a good advantage. Being able to row in that kind of weather is good. And also if, you know, we're forced onto the onto land for a day, like that's a that's an advantage too. Getting in some good land training is also good. This week is a big testing week for all of US rowing, kind of all across the country. Everyone's doing some erg testing. So we've got a uh, quite the docket lined up for the week. We have a 2K and a 6K. So, um, and I think a one minute test. So a lot of erg testing and, you know, obviously I'm a little nervous, the nerves and the kind of little bit of anxiety before erg tests never go away. But I know that I've been doing good training and I feel pretty confident in what I've done and in my body of work so far. So I am excited to let it rip, you know, but just trying to prioritize everything a little more this week, like a little more sleep, a little healthier food, a little more stretching, all that stuff, because it matters. But I think the other thing that I can feel good about going into test pieces, and I, I feel like you don't have to do anything crazy. Like you just have to go and trust your training and trust yourself and I think that the other thing I've learned is like, it's going to hurt. <laughs> so not trying to pretend that it's not going to hurt because it is going to hurt and it's, you're going to want it to be over. But I think just trying to sit in the suck a little bit is like sort of my new secret for erg testing. Like I think I used to try to think that it wouldn't hurt, but now I know that it's going to. And so just sort of approaching it as this is an opportunity to test my fitness and see what I can do. And it's not a scary thing. It's an exciting thing. And, you know, I'm excited, but obviously a little bit nervous. The other thing is like, you got to pick something fun to be on the other side. And that's really easy this, this week because it's Christmas and it's going home for Christmas. So kind of like you get through all the erg testing and all the stuff and then you get to go home for Christmas um, or I get to go home for Christmas and that'll be really fun. And I'm so I'm flying back to Boston on Saturday evening and then Sunday is Christmas Eve and Monday's Christmas Day. And then my family has my 
brother's wedding on New Year's Eve. So I will be in Boston for the whole holiday week and I'll get to see like so many friends and family because everyone's coming into town for the wedding. I'm really excited to celebrate my brother and his fiance and I can definitely talk about this more next week when it's actually wedding week, but I feel very lucky that they're bringing our whole community in and I get to see everybody as well. It's really fun for for them, obviously, but for me also. I took a whole rest day yesterday, which is kind of rare for me, but I figured we got a big week of needing to go really fast, so it's probably a good thing. Watched the Patriots play the Chiefs, which started out very exciting. Seemed like they were going to be in the game, but the second half was not the same story. They did lose. And I didn't even get to go and get to try to meet Taylor Swift. So really, I don't know. It was just sort of a just sort of a flop. But I really hope everyone has a great Christmas. I think Christmas is such a nice holiday. I really do love it. I I think that it's just, there's like a lot of magic involved and I really appreciate that. And so I think it's a good reminder to just let the magic happen and enjoy being with friends and family and loved ones. And it's crazy that it's already Christmas again. This year has been weird and fast and slow and a lot of things, but I think that it's important to just, you know, enjoy the time we have with those that we have it with. So. I hope that everyone gets to do that. So now it is time for my conversation with USA climbing star, Emma Hunt. I'm so excited to talk to you. I like did a hilarious internet deep dive on you yesterday. So I apologize for like terms that I use that are the wrong terms. No, you're going to be totally fine. I'm sorry if you saw any like old embarrassing pictures of me. No, no, no. <laughs> you're you're great on the internet. Um, <laughs> but would you call it speed climbing? Like, is that what you would yeah. say your sport is? Okay. Mm-hmm. So my discipline is speed climbing. And then like Olympic term, it's called like a um, big umbrella is sport climbing. Sport climbing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what is under the sport climbing umbrella? There's technically three different disciplines, but in the Olympics, there's only two. They combine two of them. So there's boulder and lead, which is like boulder lead combined discipline. And then there's speed climbing, which is its own discipline. And then in Tokyo, they had all three combined. How has it sort of changed like the sport in that they've brought in like these Olympic events because even those were new in Tokyo, right? Yeah. It's changed it a lot. Just like (laughs) the, even just at the gym, like training, like so many more people know about it and like come in and like, I guess just like watch me train. Cause really like, yeah, (laughs) it's just like, I think the numbers are like bigger, but just like the, environment of competing has definitely changed like it got I think way more serious and like competitive but it's been cool after Tokyo going into Paris with speed climbing being taken out and having its own discipline because it's just so different from boulder and lead it's nice to see like specialists come out of it and it's very cool they seem pretty different like you'd need different skills to do all three Mm -hmm. of them So how did you specifically get into climbing? I started climbing when I was five years old with my family. My dad tried like a portable wall at a mall and just (laughs) loved it. And he found a gym near our house and we just started going all together. And so my whole immediate family climbs and it was just like family hobby. And then when I was eight, we found the competitive side and like a coach and it just kind of took off from there. But I only did bouldering then. And then when I was like, I want to say like 10, 11, I started doing lead, like top rope. And then when I was 12, 13, when I joined a stone summit team, I started speed climbing. Wow. How much were you pushing the like, I want to do this in a more competitive environment? I really like this. Yeah. So we, it was just kind of like our whole family thing. We would always climb together and then we'd train and then just everyone would go to the comps and I just, I loved it so much and like I kept on wanting to do it and then just like kind of kept on adding a discipline for a little while. 
And then when I was on Stone Summit's youth team, I did all three disciplines. And I did, I competed in all three disciplines until, I want to say like 2020, 2021. Yeah. And, and that's then when, when you became mostly sprint. Yeah, speed was separate. I went <laughs> all to speed. Do you ever climb outside? Yes. I love it. I don't know. I've, I've like seen all the documentaries, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I am a very, I'm a novice. I don't know anything. I feel like it's so cool to have. Like, I think rowing is kind of like this, like a sport that you're doing really competitively, but is this really cool recreational activity for so many people. And I think it's cool that there's like crossover. And I feel like your sport is like so much that way. Yeah. And so uh, like outdoor climbing, it's definitely better in like the colder weather. So they kind of, I think the trend right now is to go train in gyms over summers and then you would go climb outdoors and you set what we call like projects and it's a climb that you want to send and you might have to go like a couple days, couple sessions and put in just work on it. And I think that's kind of like my roots is like outdoor climbing, training to be good and then it kind of phased into comp climbing. And so like just going outside on Thanksgiving, we went outdoor climbing with my family. <laughs> that was our like holiday family activity. Oh, that's activity. so fun. What's the, what's your favorite place you've gone outdoor climbing? I'm, I think I'm very biased to like my home crag, which is like what we call like the boulder fields. Uh, it's Stone Fort. It's in Chattanooga. It's on a golf course, funny enough. <laughs> it's yeah, I feel like climbing is a sport. Like, I mean, I obviously know it's like been around for a long time, but I really feel like it's become way more popular, like in the past, I don't even know, five, 10 years. Like, do you think that's true or? It's so true. Cause I feel like when I was little and explaining like, oh yeah, I rock climb, like, or I had to tell my teachers, oh, I'm going to a climbing comp. They're like, what's that? Why are you doing that? And now people are like, oh my gosh, you rock climb? That's so cool. They kind of understand what it is now, which is very nice when I have to explain what I do. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. What do you think? led to that do you do you know or um I think probably a couple random stand out I don't know if you've heard of the movie free solo oh yes yes yeah like free solo and just a couple other like standout athletes I don't know who, if you know who like Yanya Garmbra is mm -hmm. she's a gold medalist for Tokyo and she is just dominating the mm -hmm. boulder and lead field and so I think like athletes like her and what like free solo has done is really like opening up the climbing community. Yeah. That's so cool. And now you, you're doing it too. Yeah. Um, Easiest to watch. So <laughs> I read online, but you can, I'm sure can tell everyone better than I can. So it's the same wall that you climb like anywhere. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And What's it called? The path you take up? Like the beta. The beta. Yeah. yeah. So is everybody's beta is different or like you plan your beta or is it all yeah. you have? Okay. So it, they can be exactly the same. They can be a hundred percent unique. It's just kind of based on like you and your strengths. So like I'm a taller climber for the women and so my moves are bigger than most of the other women's because they can fit in like a box that I can't fit into <laughs> they like crunch up and I just like kind of spill out of it so like making the beta to your specifics is important so how often would you say like do you have you changed your beta do you ever change it would you be like oh I really want to learn this new like skill I don't know or is that a thing? Yeah, kind of, yeah. So every, I feel like, especially in the last couple of years, everybody's been trying new beta, just trying to find the new fastest way to get to the top. And then before Tokyo Olympics, there's this climber, Tomo Narasaki, he made like a huge game changer beta and like skipped a hold. And that's become like most everybody's standard start. And so you can like see pockets of people trending towards certain betas and then the men have just been finding like new explosive powerful ways to like skip holds and go in more of a straight line which I think is always the goal it's so interesting so like how often do you climb on that wall like at least four days a week <laughs> 
how often do you say you try to like go up as fast as possible? Like four days a week or? No, trying to do as many laps as I can or some days it's when it's just bad, like you're just trying to make it to the top. <laughs> and it depends on like where I am in a training cycle, what I'm trying to do. And like we do different training stuff and everybody has their own training methods, but like adding a weight vest and doing a lap or like doing a lap, hitting the ground and going right again is like more endurance. So it's just kind of where you are in a training cycle and what your goals are. So what is like your typical training? Like what is like a typical training week or like a typical training day like look like for you? Like how much time is like in the gym versus like, I don't know, maybe like cross training or that kind of thing? So I've been doing right now it's around two hours of like just speed climbing. Wow. And then for a seven second, right. That's just like my sport. We're like, yeah. do so much training for like a really short race, but it's much more than seven seconds. Sorry. I cut you off there. <laughs> no, it's like very relatable. Like you do all of this work for like a short race and you're like, wow, it's already over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But around like two hours for like just speed climbing. And then maybe, I don't know. It depends on how focused I am, like 30 minutes to warm up. And then depending on the day, I might finish out with like a little workout or I might save a big workout for a non-climbing day. That makes sense. And are you like, do you train with a team or do you just have like a coach? Like how does that? Yeah. So I'm just by myself right now and I have my coach here. He like, works as the U.S. national team coach every now and then, and he is the youth national team coach. He works with the youth team here, and so that's the youth team I was on, so I just stayed here and trained with him. But the U.S. team is based in Salt Lake City. Because you're still in school, right? It, yes, but I'm online. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. I was going to ask about how balancing that was going. It, you know, slowly chipping away at it. <laughs> I think that people like that's like something I've really been trying or like I think is really cool about the podcast is I don't think people realize like in sports that aren't seen all the time. I feel like people think that you're just like or we're just sort of like regular people and then every four years like go to the Olympics and like <laughs> perform. And it's like, well, no, you have to do all this work and prep and stuff to like get there. And yeah. it takes so long, <laughs> like all of the workouts and all of the stuff. And it takes for like your day is just like taken up by it. You know, why aren't you taking more classes? Like all you do is climb. And I was like, but there's actually more to like just climbing. <laughs> like I have to go do workouts or I have to plan, like make my training plan for the week or make training plans to go to Salt Lake. Like there's always something I have to do. Yeah. And they're like, why are you only taking one class? <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually qualifying for the Olympics. I'm not just sitting <laughs> watching Netflix all the time. So how often would you say do you compete? It's changed a lot for me, like year to year. Like sometimes, I think last year, it might have been like at least six World Cups, which is like the most I had done. Then it's just kind of sprinkle in like USA climbing comps every now and then. It gets so complicated when you factor in like world ranking and stuff, because in with USA Climbing, if you make top 10 world ranking, then you automatically get an invite from IFSC. So then for the next World Cup season, so you're automatically on like US team. Okay. And then it gets complicated like, oh, if you're on US team, you don't have to go compete at team trials. So then that's like eliminating comp, but you could go to team trials if you wanted. And it gets like a lot of different versions of like how you could compete. So right now for me, it's mostly just World Cups and then I'll go do a national event if I like feel like I need a comp. Okay. And do you just work with sort of your coach on that? Like how much influence does like USA Climbing have on what you're doing? Like for you to be a member of like the national team or whatever, are there certain things that you have to do throughout the year or is it more like on an individual person basis? It's definitely on like individual basis. Like USA Climbing will give me like their advice on like, hey, like we think this comp is important or you might want to go not go to this comp or something. But it like ultimately comes down to me and what I need to do is like training and training cycles. 
Mm -hmm. But for a while, it looked like maybe like end of April, beginning of May is when World Cups would start. And then they would end like September, October. And it was kind of like one comp a month or they would like kind of pair them up, do like back to back weekends. And so then it would like skip a month. It's speed is also (laughs) kind of dragged out the longest. Oh, really? Yeah. So they would do bouldering season kind of starts in April and ends June. And then lead picks up after that. And speed goes throughout the whole time. It's kind of just added on to Boulder and lead World Cups. And so we have like the longest season. So it's hard to keep track of. It's also just like so awesome that you've already qualified for the Olympics. Did you think that that was, I mean, I'm sure that was like your goal, right? In going into last year, but how has it been like having a whole year to prepare for the Olympics? It's very nice and a little daunting because I never, because <laughs> I've never had like a year for like a training plan. I like sat down. I was like, what do I do with a year? But it's like also so nice. Like, oh, I have a year. I, like as soon as I qualified, I took a week off, like no speed climbing. I hadn't done that in like maybe two or three years. No, I think that breaks are really important actually, especially mm-hmm. when you doing so much sports specific training Mm -hmm. and like speed is so much muscle memory that I'm like so strict about like oh I don't want to take more than like three days off from speed because I feel like I get rusty and I go down a whole like spiral (laughs) but taking more than three days off I was like wow I think my body really needed that and kind (laughs) of my brain (laughs) I was gonna ask about the like sort of mental side of it how much of it do you do you do like I don't know if it's okay to ask do you do like mental training like do you like see like a sports psych and all that stuff because I feel like it must be really important yeah for sure when I need it and like it's kind of like track and like out racing so it's just very like the whole thing is totally mental all the time what would you say have been kind of your like biggest improvements that you've kind of made or would you say it's just been like incremental gains like has there been anything where you were like I decided to like approach things in this way and then like I made you know whatever big jumps and like big improvements in in my climbing I guess the most like notable ones are just like when I changed beta it's cool with speed you can see like an actual improvement because of times it's like boulder and lead you can't always see improvement because the routes are constantly changing like you're never going to get the same thing again Uh, but speed you can actually see like oh wow i ran eights one year and now i'm in low sevens or just like you can see like big jumps and it's i think those are like the times when i'm like wow i'm actually like improving it's cool (laughs) yeah oh it's such a cool sport does it ever though get boring to be doing the same climb like ever (laughs) all the time um yeah some days I just like go into the training and I'm like okay I don't want to do this right now (laughs) because like uh, the gym like has everything it has speed lead and bouldering so like I like rest a good amount too like three to six minutes on the ground so I just kind of like look around I'm like I want to go try that climb like it looks so fun So it does get a little boring sometimes, but I think usually it's pretty engaging because I always have something to work on. Do you ever listen to like music or anything or do you just, you're just like, oh, you do? Okay. I'm a big music, like headphones, like climber. It's like some people are very just like focused in the moment and I'm just like, have my headphones in singing. I don't even care if people hear me sometimes. (laughs) No, totally. Do you have any like favorite favorite songs that you always listen to like before a competition I do but I keep those very close oh okay yeah no I understand I understand (laughs) it is so funny though like it's so individual what people are like listening to in their headphones I don't know I I think it's like I think it'd be hilarious if like you're at a competition I'm sure it's true for like every sport and just to go around and like be able to hear what everybody is listening to because it's never what you think it's gonna be (laughs) I feel like doesn't fit the like vibe of the person, what they're actually listening to. Definitely. And like, I've been doing like music at comp since I was like eight. And so I just created one long playlist. (laughs) And so like every now and then I'll like make like, oh, I want like this playlist for this comp, but I have like a huge playlist and like it has like high school musical on it. (laughs) Like It's never 
what you expect. People are like, oh, she must be listening to like some like hardcore music. And I'm like, I don't know. There's like a high school musical. I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah, no, no. I, that's totally what I mean. Like if you like a song and it's like boppy, then you're like, I got to listen to it. I don't know. Like, it, I don't care if it's embarrassing. <laughs> like um, it, it's me. Like, it's, like, there's no reason, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What would you say is like, I don't know, like if you were to give advice to somebody that's like in climbing or outside of climbing and just like wants to kind of like make the jump to the next level. I guess consistency with like training, like just putting in the time and even if it's stuck, like sucks and you don't want to do it, just still go do it. Yeah, that's good advice. And that's actually, I think, how you go to the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, because like, motivation can come and go, but like dedication, that's where it's at. What are you most looking forward to at the Olympics besides competing? I think seeing everybody. Like I'm going to think so hard and be like, oh my God, that's Katie Ledecky. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, just like the athlete village experience. And I kind of already did that at like Pan Am's games. So I feel like that was a good warm up to like, okay, like keep it cool. Don't just be like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think you, I think you can be like, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't either. I feel like I'll definitely be like, like, oh my God, that was just someone by us. And then like round a corner and freak out, but I don't want to like just do it in stare. their face. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And the really big celebrities like don't actually live in the village. So. Oh. At least in Japan, they didn't. Like, the gymnastics team and the, like, soccer team and the basketball people, mm. like, they all lived in hotels, I think. Like, none of them were in the village. Mm. But, like, the swimmers and, like, track and field and, like, volleyball. I don't know. There were a lot of people. I definitely had a lot of moments. I was like, oh, my God. But, um, yeah, no, it's definitely cool. And like from other countries too. I don't know. It's just, it's just so cool. Athletes come in like so many different shapes and sizes and, you know, but everyone's like the best at what they do. And I just think that's like such a cool thing to see and like celebrate. It's very inspiring. I I think that's also like one of the things like why climbing is so cool is there's no like one perfect size. It's like, you can be tall, you can be short, you can be lean, you could be more solid. Like it doesn't matter what you are as long as you can do the moves it's totally fine that's really cool and like way more inclusive which is really cool yeah we have almost a full team for paris now even just looking at everyone going to paris there's no like copy it's everyone's different. like the men's boulder team like jesse grouper he's way taller and colin's around like my height like it's just very different yeah no that's awesome well, this has been really cool. Um, I feel like I've, I don't know if I like didn't ask you about anything or if you have any questions for me. What's your training like? I'm like very curious. Well, first of all, our, our races are like six to eight minutes, depending on like wind and like boat class and stuff. Um, and mm-hmm. so we do uh, two to three sessions a day and they're normally like, well, we'll do two like cardio sessions, either like rowing, always one rowing or like we use the rowing machines if the okay, water's yeah. really bad or whatever. Um, and then the second one will be either like another rowing session or indoors or some sort of cross training, like bike or run, whatever. And then we'll do either like a lift or a core in between and we do mostly what we call like steady state. So it's like low heart rate, 140, just like knocking out meters. And then we'll do prob. it depends on like the point in our training, but two to three like workouts a week, which are either like AT or like threshold or at like pace, like race pace. Is like endurance thing for you guys? Cause it's seven to like eight minutes. Yeah. So like the whole thing is like that you're basically going at almost like max heart rate for that like seven to eight minute race, which I think is like why we do so much like endurance training because it's like you need like fast twitch and slow twitch muscles because we do like a racing start. So you're like, you know, whatever max and then you like lengthen it out a bit, but it's still like a very high rate and like high intensity and then we like bring it up again at the end so it's so crazy 
Yeah, it's similar to like the like a mile run. I mean, it's definitely like a little bit shorter, but I think it's a similar like kind of. And I think there's other sports like I think cross country skiing and like speed skating. Some of those things are like a very similar athlete profile kind of thing. Kind of like I guess strategy while you're going. Yeah, it is a lot of like mental, but it's mostly like mental in the sense of like making your body not listen to your mind telling it to stop like kind of thing yeah, yeah. Just being like I'm not tired like keep going like, yeah fast. yeah yeah like, this is fine everything's fine <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lay down it's all good <laughs> it's so cool that you guys like you keep going and then like you get faster at the end because like even sport climbing or lead climbing it's like around six minutes, but you can stop and rest anywhere you want. Like hang on a hold for like one minute. Like you can, like no one's going to tell you to keep going. It, it was just so cool that you're like constantly going. Cause I feel like climbing with like speed, we're going constantly for like six seconds, but like lead you're going for like six minutes, but you can stop whenever you want. It's so random. How do you yeah. manage all the travel? Uh, I, not always the best. It's, like, so hard with, like, time zones sometimes. Like, especially when we go to, like, Korea or Jakarta, you're just kind of, like, up at 5 a.m. And you're like, oh, not what I want. (laughs) Somebody was telling me, like, it's, like, statistically harder to, like, go to the Olympics in any sport than, like, doing all these other things that sound way – you know what I mean? Like, I can't remember what they were, but I was just like, oh, God, like, that is stressful. I don't know. But I think also when you're in it all the time, it's sort of – becomes more normal right because this is just like the life you're living so you're like oh yeah of course like of course I qualified for the Olympics and like I'm going and I just went to Pan Ams and I like I'm doing all these things but it's like when you take a step back you're like whoa that's so cool um yeah yeah sure yeah Mm -hmm. cool well I really appreciate you coming on and talking to me and I will be cheering for you from afar I hope I qualify for myself, but also so that I can come and watch you speed climb. Well, good luck. I hope it all goes good. Oh, thank you. No. Thank you. You too. No, this was so fun. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. And thank you so much to Emma for coming on the podcast and sharing her story. I hope that I qualify for the Olympics for many reasons, but now one of them is definitely so that I can potentially meet Emma in person and maybe watch her compete because it just seems so cool. So to end the show, I wanted to share a quote that I heard on another awesome podcast, the Ritual podcast, and his guest was last year's Iron Woman champion, Chelsea Sodaro. And she shared this quote that she has written on her bathroom mirror. And I just really like resonated with it. And so she wrote, make the most important thing, the most important thing. And I just feel like that's so true. And that doesn't need to be the same thing all the time. You know, like your most important thing can change. But when something is the most important thing, you like owe it to yourself to make it the most important thing. So thanks for sharing that, Chelsea, and Rich Roll, and I hope everyone has a great week. Thanks for listening, and Merry Christmas. Bye. I'd love to hear from you, so send us a topic suggestion, or if you'd like to submit a question for our Ask Christy Anything segment, head to our website, theother3years.com.